We're here at the Brainiac firing range, but before we put our two spud guns head to head, let's have a look at how our back garden ballistics fruit and veg challenge went. Using a few tubular shaped crisp packets and a small amount of lighter fluid, we managed to create our very own mini mortar. But what's a launcher without a missile? We fired a tennis ball, an orange, we tried to fire a spud, but it was rough. The best performer though was the mighty Granny Smith. It blitzed the opposition by a good seven meters. We're here today at the battle of the two biggest spud guns you're ever likely to see. They use different forms of propulsion. This one uses hairspray. It's actually the butane in the hairspray that gives all the power to the explosion. This gun uses compressed air as its power source. When I turn this valve, 40 pounds per square inch will come shooting up this barrel. Will it be compressed air or hairspray that wins the day? First up, the hairdresser's friend. We're going to put a little spray of hairspray in the end. And then put the cap on tight. You can see the fuse wire in there ready to go. Next on its stand. And we're retiring to a safe distance again. Range is clear. Firing in three, two, one. Go! Oh! <laughs> oh, chips for tea. I'm taking this one home. Now, because we know how far the spud went, 77.23 metres, and we know that our launch angle is 45 degrees, using some basic physics, we can work out some cool stuff like launch velocity and how high it went. Our spud left the barrel at 27.5 metres per second, or just over 60 miles per hour. The physics also tell us that it reached a height of 19.29 metres. Yes, physics can be fun. Now let's see how well gun number two goes. Here's our compressed air gun. In goes the potato. It's a very snug fit. Now, our record so far is 77.2 metres. That's a big ask. Can we crank it up to about 50 pounds per square inch? Right, yeah. Excellent. Clear the range! Firing in three, two, one! Oh, not bad! Not bad, but not good enough to beat the propellant provided by the hairspray. The launch velocity was much slower at 20.8 metres per second, which means our spud only went 44.16 metres and reached a peak height of just over 11. So there we have it. In the battle of the spud guns, the wimpy compressed air loses out every time to the raw power of butane. Go hairspray! Next time, we up the ante and take a step back in time with this cardboard cannon and a bowling ball. Ballistics can be defined as the study of the dynamics of projectiles and or the study of the flight characteristics of said projectiles. But for John Tickle and Brainiac, ballistics also means a chance to put different objects into different devices and make them go bang. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, the daddy of all our cannons. But before we light the fuse on this one, let's see how our other back garden ballistics have got on. Using physics, we've been able to work out launch velocities, peak trajectory heights and projectile ranges. Of course, this has just been an excuse to make our very own launch devices. The three crisp packets and a splash of lighter fluid return some favourable results. But the best performer by far was our hairspray-powered spud gun, travelling a massive distance of 77.23 metres. Chips for tea. OK, so some pretty impressive stuff there. But now we're playing the serious game. We're using a specially designed propellant made of nitrocellulose. And a projectile is this bowling ball. Now the tube has been made to measure, so it's a really nice snug fit. That's important, because when the charge goes off, we don't want any of those expanding gases escaping round the bowling ball and losing power. OK, happy to go? Yeah, we're ready. Cool, let's have the key then. Now, this beast has never been fired before, so anything could happen. Firing in three, two, one! <laughs> that was rubbish, gentlemen. Right, can we try with more charge? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even bother to measure that attempt, as we know we can do better. We've got more nitrocellulose, and we're doubling the amount. 
which in theory means four times the power. OK, take two. Ready to fire? And firing in three, two, one, fire! Oh, massive! <laughs> That's more like it, isn't it? Cool! <laughs> Our bowling ball hit the ground 35.2 metres later, reached a peak height of 8.8 .8 metres, and had a launch velocity of 18.57 metres per second. OK, this is what makes Brainiac great. This is the size of our first charge. This is the size of the charge we're using now. The big question remains, though. Will it be too much power for the cardboard cannon? Firing in three, two, one, fire! <laughs> more charge didn't mean more distance. The 10-pound bowling ball landed pretty much in the same spot. Right, I think we found our optimum charge. We're not going to get the bowling ball to go any further because the propellant is quite slow burning. That's why we see all the flame coming out of the muzzle after the cannonball has left. We need something lighter. So Brainiacs, bring in those watermelons. Now, we've got a whole range of shapes there. I think shot selection is going to be quite important because, we, again, we need quite a tight fit in the barrel of the gun. Once we'd found the two best-sized watermelons, it was time to flick the switch. Firing in three, two, one, fire! <laughs> Melon number one, very disappointing. Only reaching 9.5 metres. Here's our last watermelon. We've chosen one that's quite a bit looser than the first one, as you can see. Now, this could go either one of two ways. Either it's going to come out of the barrel quite nicely, because it's loose, or there's so much gas escaping around the edge, it just won't come out at all. So, luck of the gods, really. Three, two, one, fire! <laughs> So Mother Nature not providing us with the kind of projectile we needed. With a distance of only 12.62 metres, it just couldn't compete with our bowling ball. Well, perhaps the melons weren't as good as the bowling ball, but that's because they weren't so tightly fitted inside the tube. Overall, though, we can say back garden ballistics, cracking efforts. <laughs>